What if you could find the solution to the fuel problem right in your own backyard? Dr. Lonnie Ingram thinks you can. We work on processes to convert this yard trash and shredded wood into automotive fuel. His secret? A radical new way of making ethanol, cellulosic ethanol. In recent years, ethanol has been billed as the great green hope to replace petroleum. People all over the world are growing their fuel. In the U.S., it's usually made from the kernels of feed corn. Today, corn is being used to produce about 5 billion gallons a year. But many scientists are saying, beware of ethanol. Basically, you don't want to need so much biofuel uh, that you would end up competing with food crops. In Mexico, tortilla protests have filled the streets as corn, a basic staple, skyrockets out of reach. Are we creating a situation where people are enjoying a luxury of travel at the expense of people who just need a basic diet? Lonnie Ingram looked at the ethanol problem and he wondered, could he make ethanol out of the non-edible parts of plants? Corn cobs and the corn stems and leaves could be used to make ethanol. He was inspired by the way things grow out of control in Florida. Lawn clippings, orange rinds, and sugarcane stalks. Floridians are practically swimming in the stuff. These are piles of wood waste and yard waste from Gainesville, Florida. In the whole U.S., a billion tons of woody biomass are produced every year. But figuring out how to make ethanol from all these leftovers wasn't so easy. Lonnie Ingram knows his history. He knew that woody biomass had been used as a fuel source before. In the First and Second World War, portions of wood were being converted into fuel. Alcohol was made from sawdust, but that process was very inefficient. It could never be an important green fuel. Back as early as the, the 1900s, there were experiments being done to produce sugar by cooking woody materials and dilute acids. Lonnie started out the same way. He chopped up the stalks and stems into a uniform small size. Once the size has been reduced to less than an inch or so, the material will be treated with dilute acid at elevated temperature to solubilize a portion of the sugars and to open up the structure of wood. But after that, he knew he had to travel a different road, a road that was green and efficient. In the conversion of woody biomass into ethanol, there was a problem, and that problem was with the many different types of sugars that are present. Corn kernels, for instance, contain one easy to digest sugar, but stalks and stems contain several different kinds, and those sugars are tougher to break down. But tougher doesn't mean it's impossible. After much trial and error, Lonnie Ingram found the secret. We started with E. coli, an organism which is present and an integral part of our digestive process. Left alone, the E. coli turns cellulose into a worthless lactic acid. But Lonnie Ingram saw a way to tweak nature. He added two genes to the E. coli bacteria and transformed it into an efficient fuel-making machine. This is the, the organism we developed. The same organism can use those sugars and convert those into ethanol. These thick colonies of E. coli on this plate are fermenting as we speak. Now, a genetically enhanced version of the organism that digests our food turns stalks and leaves into a valuable fuel. Each dry ton of this material can be converted into 50 to 100 gallons of ethanol. This could actually end up roughly tripling net farm and ranch income and give us in America about three quarters of a million new jobs building that new biofuels industry. Woody biomass could replace 35% of our automotive fuel in the future without hurting our food supply. A new plant in Jennings, Louisiana is already online and can make up to 30 million gallons of ethanol every year. More facilities are on the way. This can help, this can make a large contribution. In the future, it will be one of the choices at the gas pump. So you drive up to the fuel pump with a credit card and a calculator to figure out which blend will give you the cheapest uh, driving that day. But what if you could drive around without ever going to the gas station?